In today's episode, we'll take a look at the new Cura 4.12. But when I installed it on my Mac, it erased all my machine profiles, all my slicing profiles. The slicing profiles I can get back easily. I share those. But my machine profiles, there was a lot of work in those. Well, it turns out I found a way to get them back. And it's really not that difficult. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. One of the new features is an improved horizontal surface. This looks really interesting, but I'm still playing with it. The other one is lightning infill. This is basically no infill until the top, and then it gets really thick and supports your top layer for support. So it's kind of interesting. Other than that, it's mostly Ultimaker user improvements and then bug fixes. And you can see they've already got a new bug fix 4.12.1. I downloaded the latest version of 4.12, installed it like I normally do on my Mac, and here's proof I've got 4.12 installed. But this is what I found. All my profiles were gone. All my machine profiles were gone. All that was here was the Ultimaker S5. And when I checked my slicing profiles, all of them were gone. Normally this is carried over when you do the next version, including the machine profiles, but all of this is gone. Fortunately, I didn't get rid of 4.11, and all my profiles are still there. But see, slicing profiles you can import and export. That's not a big deal. But it says machine profiles. I have a bunch of them. You can't import and export them. There's so many details that I put in here. The start code, the end code, all the different settings for these machines. I'll start with a basic profile, and then I adjust it, and then I save it as a new one. Now the trick is don't erase a previous version of Cura. So 4.11 is still on my machine. And all I did was put a chep cube on the bed, then selected one of the machines. In this case, my Creality Ender 3 Max. So here's all the profile settings that I want to come back. I want this to come back as a machine setting. So all I'm gonna do is select it. I'm also using my 0.28 profile. So then you just slice it, and then you save the project. So click Save Project. And then you'll click Save again. And this saves the project. You can give it a name. I call it ChepCube Max, so I know it's a Max profile. And it's a .3MF file. Then I go back to version 4.12. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open that project file. So there it is, ChepCube Max .3MF. I'll click Open, and it'll give you two choices. Open as Project or Import Models. Click Open as Project. And now the printer profile and also the slicing profile will be brought in from that 3MF file. Click open and then you'll see it appear. It'll change to my Ender Max and then it'll show up up here in the machine profiles. If I go into manage printers then I can go look at the machine settings and make sure that all those settings that I want to keep are there. And here they are. Here's X, Y, and Z settings, my start G code, my NG code, my print head settings, everything that I wanted is there. So this is a way to import it. And if you have a custom slicing profile that you didn't save, this is an easy way to do it. I mean, you can import and export, but you can see it was brought in with the .3MF. Very handy. So basically I did this multiple times and I got four of my profiles to come over. I've got more to move, but at least I've got the ones that I use the most in 4.12. So now let's take a look at that lightning infill. Here's a CHEP cube that I stretched to 300 millimeters tall. I'm just going to use my standard 0.2 CHEP profile, 25% infill with a grid pattern, 1 hours and 37 minutes. Let's look at it in preview mode. It's just a standard infill from the bottom all the way to the top. Not a big deal. So now let's go try the lightning infill and see how it compares. To use lightning, just go to infill pattern, change grid to lightning, which is at the very bottom of the drop down. Then we'll slice it. Now it's one hour and 19 minutes. It definitely saves time, but there's no infill in this thing until you get to the top. You can see it gets towards the top, then it starts to grow like lightning bolts, and then gets real dense towards the top to support the Z. So that's how lightning works. So you give up strength, but you gain time. If this was a bigger print, it would really save a lot of time. So because my profiles were gone, I decided to just make some new 4.12 profiles. If you go to chepclub.com, you can download them for free. Just scroll down to the Chep Cure of Profiles. And then the latest ones are right here in the .zip file. What you want to do is download that and unzip it. 
and then make sure you have a Creality machine selected. You have to have a Creality machine, doesn't matter which one, but a Creality machine selected. And you can see that two of my older ones were brought over with that whole conversion. But go down to Manage Profiles, and then we're going to import the new ones. So go to Import, and wherever it was unzipped, you go grab one by one and open them, and it'll bring it right into your machine or your slicing profiles. So just go through the list, each one, there's even a TPU in here, and then you'll have all of them in place. Now, if you want to get rid of those older ones like I do, I'm just going to click remove and get rid of the 4.11. So all that's going to be in here is 4.12, and then I can slice from there. So hopefully this helps you out. Give it a try. Try out my new profiles. Let me know how they work for you in the comments below. I'll probably be making some adjustments as I play with 4.12 a little more. But more important, go take each of your machine profiles and make a project file for each one. That way you've got a backup in case this ever happens to you. Now I know I'll get comments from people saying, you can get those machine profiles at this folder under this folder. Well, I tried. On my Mac, which is different than a PC, I dug deep into the folders. I could not find the machine profiles anywhere. But the fact that I had these project files and I could import, well, that works on Mac, works on Windows, wherever. Plus, you can easily share with somebody and they'll have your settings, they'll have your machine profile so they can check your work or share it. So it's really cool that it does this. But for version 4.13 of Cura or beyond, I'd love to see the option to save machine profiles and import them back in like we do with slicing profiles. That's a feature I'd love to see. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. And if nothing else, click on that CHIP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.